anything, this is allegedly. Ain't nobody going to catch me slipping, okay? Okay. So allegedly, Cassie has turned over evidence to the feds. Yes, to the feds. She has turned over videotapes, a USB drive, and Kim Porter's burner phone. Now, there is also an alleged email out saying a plethora of other things that include T.D. Jakes with Diddy. You act just like the center. That's right. And you stink just like the center. That's right. That's right. That's why you find T.D. Jakes hanging out right. with Puff Daddy. If Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Money or sex. That's all that happens at Diddy parties. I've been swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you gone through a time of swallow? Hey folks, you won't believe the wild news I've got for you today. So after all those lawsuits hitting Diddy, it's like a domino effect on everyone around him. Seriously, it feels like Diddy's carrying around a bag of bad vibes. And guess who's the latest to catch some of that drama? T.D. Jakes. Yeah, the super respected man of God. Can you even wrap your head around that? It's like, we can kind of get why Diddy's got some shady rumors given the whole music industry scene, but when someone like T.D. Jakes gets dragged into it, it's a whole different level. Anyways, if you're into crazy celebrity gossip, grab your popcorn, cause this is gonna be one wild ride. So T.D. Jakes, the big name pastor, is blowing up online since December 24, 2023. Why? Well, there's this TikTok user that's making some wild claims about him. Apparently, R&B singer Cassie Ventura spilled some tea to the FBI, accusing Diddy of serious stuff a month after filing a lawsuit against him for some pretty awful acts during their decade-long relationship. So, after Cassie settled her beef with Bad Boy Records boss Diddy, this TikTok user dropped some bombshell claims. Apparently, Cassie handed more stuff to the FBI, like tapes from Diddy's wild parties and even Kim Porter's secret phone. Now, here's the jaw dropper. The TikTok user says there's an email that points fingers at Diddy's close buddy, Pastor T.D. Jakes. Yeah, the same man who officiated Kim Porter's funeral. Crazy, right? According to the TikToker, there's this clip floating around where some dude spills the beans that Cassie dished out tapes, showing Diddy's wild parties, involving not just T.D. Jakes but a bunch of other big shots, and things allegedly got pretty scandalous, like S-wording with multiple men at the soirees. Insane, right? Okay, so we all know T.D. Jakes. The big deal behind the Potter House Church in Dallas, right? He's like the top Christian preacher in the U.S., rubbing shoulders with celebs, especially Diddy. Time magazine even crowned him America's Best Preacher, and the New York Times called him one of the nation's most influential and mesmerizing preachers. But hold up, things are getting weird. Diddy and Jakes, who've been tight, are now in the spotlight after Diddy got hit with lawsuits for alleged misconduct. Diddy's been singing praises about Jakes, crediting him for helping out during some dark times. In 2021, they even joined forces to bring Jakes's sermons to Revolt TV. Now, with this TikTok video claiming Diddy's ex, Cassie, spilled the beans on some shady stuff saying Jakes was up to no good with young folks at Diddy's parties, total head scratcher for real and the internet's going nuts over it. The email says, so I want to put you up on game on the real nature of Diddy and Bishop Jakes' relationship. But first, let's understand that Bishop Jakes is not of God. He is undoubtedly a Freemason, and so was Diddy. And I say he was, because it seems as though he has been stripped of his protection, privileges, and power. But make no mistake about it, his soul is still spoken for by the devil. He will never be able to fend off or escape that harsh reality. Anyways, I'm told Diddy and Jakes masked the real nature of their relationship. According to the email, back in June 1983, Kim Porter claimed T.D. Jakes was accused of messing with a young guy just a year after tying the knot with his wife. The word is, the whole thing got hushed up somehow. Fast forward to 1999, when a guy threatened to spill the beans on Jakes, mysteriously, he vanished. Pastor Blank spills that the dude got paid off to stay quiet. Two years later, the same guy turns up dead with a gunshot to the head. Talk about shady, right? No names, though. This all went down at Emmanuel Temple of Faith in Smithers, West Virginia. Rumor has it folks from Jakes' hometown insist he's been on the down low with guys all along, 
and there's even talk of some older pastor grooming him. When Jakus hits up Diddy's shindigs, rumor has it he's throwing back massive amounts of boosy and puffing on cigars in some exclusive part of the house. Now, just cause he's in a private area that's invite only doesn't mean he's off the radar. Apparently, he's still under watch. Oh, and get this, the bishop's wife never shows up to Diddy's bashes, and word is, she's well aware of what's going down. People are saying she's questioned why she's never been on the guest list. According to Blank, Cassie's in the loop about the bishop's scandals, and Kim Porter found out through servers who spilled the beans about Diddy's wild parties. Kim was all set to spill the tea in her book, It's Wild, Right? But hey, gotta remember these are just some crazy claims floating around on social media, no hard evidence. Still, that didn't stop everyone from going nuts on social platforms, and now T.D. Jakes is blowing up online. One person said surprised, but not surprised about T.D. Jakes because he was good friends with Eddie Long and birds of a feather flock. Another said, I'm glad all this stuff is hitting the fan. Time for Hollywood to finally be exposed. Now, get this. There's this psychic on TikTok who apparently called all this craziness like two years back. She went on this rant about T.D. Jakes being a Freemason, taking occultic vows, and being in some brotherhood serving Satan as his true boss. According to her, he's using his gifts to mess with people's heads. Oh, and here's the kicker. She predicted that Jakes would be in one of the biggest scandals ever, saying he's not exactly straight, and the whole thing would be about his SEX orientation. It's mind-blowing, right? While there's no proof to back up the claims against Jakes, this isn't his first rodeo with controversy. Back in 2009, Jakes's son, Jermaine, got in hot water for allegedly doing some indecent stuff at Keast Park in Dallas. Fast forward to last year, and there's more drama. Jakes's daughter's estranged hubby got accused of some really awful stuff with their adopted daughter. And guess what? Diddy's no stranger to these kinds of rumors either. Now Maze, the former Bad Boy Records artist, has had enough of staying quiet. He's spilling the tea, claiming Diddy's allegedly been in a sketchy relationship with Jakes for ages. But wait, there's more. Mace is accusing Diddy of making all the bad boy artists get involved into freak-offs with him, holding their careers over their heads. It seems like some bad boy records artists are spilling the beans on Diddy, and let me tell you, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Diddy's got a rep for not treating his artists too well. Some of them got the short end of the stick. Either he paid them peanuts or didn't cough up anything at all. Take Tanya Blount, for example. She spilled that Diddy made her record a ton of songs she hated, only to drop her like a hot potato and ditch the entire album. But wait, it gets worse. She says she got so fed up with the album being ignored that she even tried to take her own life. She said, It was the hardest decision because that was how I was able to provide and take care of my family at the time. It was so hard. It broke me. It really did. I went into therapy with bad thoughts and even attempted to unalive myself. I was in a Dallas hospital on 72 hours watch. I had taken pills. I decided, this is it. My son was fine. He would have had people to take care of him. I just gave up. Those people were testifying. They were brought to Puff first saying that they what they saw against Sean what they saw Sean do. And do you guys recall that nightclub drama back in 1999 involving Diddy and Jennifer Lopez? It was a whole mess. Diddy faced charges and was staring down jail time. But guess what? The charges got dropped, but word on the street is Diddy threw his own artist, Shine, under the bus to make it happen. According to his ex-bodyguard, Diddy supposedly even paid off witnesses to testify against Shine during the trial. Here's the crazy twist. Bad Boy Records actually dumped Shine when he was behind bars. Shine spilled the tea himself in a 2020 interview, confirming that Diddy had let him down. Apparently, Puff apologized. He said, He did apologize to me for that when we met in Paris. He did say that he could have handled it better, but he was under a lot of pressure from the lawyers to throw me under the bus. There's a ton more stories surfacing about what Diddy put his artists through, but that's a tale for another time. What's not shocking, though, is that none of his former crew is sticking up for him during these lawsuits. Actually, some, like Maze and Betha, are straight up calling him out and spilling the beans on the messed up stuff he made them do. Maze ain't holding back. He recently dropped a bomb, claiming Diddy had this long-term thing with Pastor T.D. Jakes and allegedly made his artists get involved in some questionable stuff. It's been years since Mace split from Bad Boy Records, but he's still carrying a big grudge against Diddy, and who 
can blame him? Not only did he leave on bad terms, but he's saying he didn't even get paid. You no, know, I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album? And then he became a fake pastor? According to Mace, Diddy trashed his rep in the industry, making it impossible for him to get signed elsewhere. No wonder Mace never really made a comeback in the music biz. And get this, Mace always insisted he wrote most of Diddy's raps, never saw a dime for it. Diddy, of course, denied it all and even threw shade, calling Mace a fake pastor. Now, this is the reference to the fact that Mace became a pastor after leaving the industry. Now, he finds it pretty ironic that Diddy called him a fake pastor when Diddy's buddy, Pastor T.D. Jakes, has been getting some serious side-eye for supposedly being a fake pastor for years. Anyway, Maze is spilling the tea on Diddy and T.D. Jakes allegedly having a thing going on. But before we dive into that juicy tidbit, let's talk about what Maze has to say about Diddy's grand gesture in September. Remember when Diddy made this big show about giving his artists back their publishing rights to the songs they dropped under his label? He held all the cards, and out of the blue, he decided to hand them back, just to be nice or something. At the time, he said, It's just doing the right thing. I think that we as an industry and as a people have to look in the mirror and make a shift forward. It's about evolving, leading by example, and reforming an industry that needs it in a world that needs reform. I'll tell you one thing that I do want people to know. This was done, like, two years ago. Everything just got taken care of. Now is not a publicity stunt or anything like that. Well, according to Mace, it was indeed a publicity stunt from Diddy, because Diddy was apparently trying to score points with folks who knew his secrets, especially when he was dealing with Cassie's lawsuit on the down low. Now, Mace has had this major beef with Diddy, and he's airing out some seriously messed up secrets. Since Cassie dropped her lawsuit, the rumor mill's been going nuts, predicting that Diddy's about to take a bunch of people down with him. Names like Young Miami and ex-Bad Boy Records president Harvey Pierre, who's in hot water for something serious, have been thrown around. But here's the kicker. Everyone seems to be forgetting about Diddy's pastor and buddy, T.D. Jakes. Now, T.D. Jakes has been getting some side-eye for not being your typical pastor. Instead of the usual preaching, he's all about that money talk, claiming God's on board with making as much cash as possible. And let's be real, he's got a thing for the glitz and glam of celebrity life, hanging out with famous faces more than your average churchgoer. So, in the past few years, T.D. Jakes has become Diddy's go-to celebrity buddy. Their friendship has gotten super tight, and you know how rumors start flying when two close pals are hanging out a lot. People are starting to wonder if there's more to their friendship, if you catch my drift. Diddy's been dealing with rumors forever, and now tongues are wagging about T.D. Jakes possibly being his secret partner, especially since there's chatter about Jakes being in the closet too. Things got even juicier when T.D. Jakes' son got caught trying to solicit from an undercover cop. Now, Diddy and T.D. Jakes go way back, even to the days when he was still dating Kim Porter. When Kim passed away, T.D. Jakes even posted about it on Instagram, saying, My family and I would like to offer our love and condolences to Diddy and his entire family as they traverse this tragic loss of Miss Kim Porter. Though you may grieve her absence, realize that many people never have such love in all of their lives. You are blessed to have someone to miss. May God's grace guide you through this challenging time. Diddy even had T.D. Jakes officiate Kim's funeral. That's how tight they are. Throughout their long friendship, T.D. Jakes has been a regular at Diddy's parties. Now this got some raised eyebrows, cause, let's be real, Diddy's not exactly known for being a saint. I'm not trying to be all judgy, but even before this whole Cassie mess, there's been chatter about shady stuff going down at Diddy's private gatherings, especially the legendary parties he throws. They're like the stuff of legends, with talks of all kinds of debauchery, including stuff. So, why was T.D. Jakes a regular at these shindigs over the years? Jaguar Wright had some interesting things to say and spilled the tea on that. Word on the street, according to Mays, is that Jaguar's on to something. He's backing her claims that Diddy and T.D. Jakes aren't just buddies. They're actually intimate partners. And get this, insiders spill the beans that T.D. Jakes is just one of Diddy's several male partners, and they've been low-key about it for years. But hold up, there's more to the story. Remember how Cassie spilled the tea about Diddy allegedly forcing her into some questionable situations? Well, Mays is saying she's not the only one. 
one. According to him, Diddy's been making his artists get involved in some wild stuff too. On a recent podcast episode with Cameron, they spilled about hiring an escort, and things nearly got out of hand. Now, recall Cassie's lawsuit where she mentioned Diddy not getting her permission before getting her into these situations? The lawsuit spills the details. Diddy hired a man, brought him home, and they all wore masquerade masks. They ingested something, and Diddy directed Cassie and the man to perform intimate acts while he watched. The whole thing lasted for days, and Diddy even dubbed it a freak-off or F.O. He'd randomly tell Cassie he wanted an F.O., and she was expected to arrange and hire male escorts. Well, according to the scoop from an insider Mace and Cameron, were supposedly reenacting the whole freak-off scenario they claimed Diddy forced them into. According to the insider, Diddy had this strange initiation thing where he'd allegedly push his artists into these situations right after signing them. And get this, the claim is that he'd also allegedly dose them up with a lot of those who said no supposedly never saw their songs hit the shelves. They got dropped without any good reason. Now, it's got me wondering if this was the real deal behind why Tanya Blount got the boot and never had any releases under Bad Boy Records. Now let's dive into the scoop on some well-known guys in the industry that Diddy is said to have allegedly tried to pull into some seriously messed up situation. He told me he'd take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the f what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let me move, man, before I do something. You're gonna make me mess up the wedding. First up is 50 Cent and the whole Diddy shopping saga. So, back in 2003, at Chris Lighty's wedding, Diddy threw out the offer to take 50 Cent on a shopping spree. Now, keep in mind, 50 was already a seasoned industry player by then, hitting 28 years old and almost a decade in the game. He wasn't having any of Diddy's proposal. In 50's own words, he recalls the moment. He said something to me one time at Chris Lighty's wedding. He told me he wanted to take me shopping. I looked at him like, what did you just say? Let me move before I do something. You're gonna make me mess up the wedding. In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. I Come mean, on. but... Did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. And then there's Usher. Back in the 90s, Diddy ran this thing called Puffy Flavor Camp. It was like a crash course for young stars to get some mentorship from the man himself. And let me tell you, the stories these celebs have spilled about their time in Puffy Flavor Camp are just wild. Usher, the R&B sensation we all know, spilled the beans in 2016. He told Howard that he really got a taste of fame after spending a year living with Puff Daddy when he was just 14. Picture it, young Usher wowing L.A., Reed with his musical skills, and bam, he's jetting off to New York to crash with Puffy during the golden era of Bad Boy Records, all in the name of getting the real deal scoop on, making it big in the music scene. I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle, and I saw it, Usher said during his first Stern Show interview. It was pretty wild. It was crazy, Usher said, while rattling off some of the biggest names in hip-hop who were a constant presence at Puffy's house, including Notorious B.I.G., Lil' Kim, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, and Craig Mack. I was like the little brother. They called me Baby Boo, Usher spilled. Also, there's Sway Lee, who took a trip to the Bahamas with Diddy a few years back. And then there's Justin Bieber, who apparently had some fear vibes going on whenever Diddy was around. A few times I was running around with D-Mac and Puff. Uh, we just did a bunch of partying. We might have went to the studio once or twice, but I don't think I didn't get to record nothing. I was just... You know, yeah. possibly. So, so you think that you've worked with a, with a gay rapper? Yeah, man. And, and not being just full out hiding and trying to pretend like he, you know, loves girls and lived the rap lifestyle, but really, he's a man fan. Next up is Game. He didn't flat out say Diddy tried anything, but he did drop some eyebrow-raising details. The game spilled the beans about chilling with Diddy for a good two years, doing the whole shopping spree thing, and not laying down a single track together. Strange, right? Back in the day, chatting with VLAD TV, the game opened up about high-profile rappers living a bit of a double life. He dropped a bomb, saying he thinks there are several rappers in the closet, and these guys are covering up their true colors by hooking up with lots of ladies. Game was like, I don't have an issue with being be proud of it. His beef is with folks pretending not to be 
but actually are. He got serious, talking about how it's not cool because it can lead to some serious health issues and a whole mess of drama. And when asked if he worked with a rapper who's not being straight up about their orientation, he didn't hesitate. He was like, yeah, man, there's some man fans out there in hip hop. It's like he's saying, if you're just own it. No need for all the hiding and pretending. Game didn't spill any names, but he dropped hints. Then, he rolls up on Drink Champs last year and spills all the details about how he crossed paths with Diddy. Game got serious about music around 2001 with his brother Big Phase 100. They cooked up a mixtape, and lo and behold, it landed in Diddy's hands. Game's thinking, sweet, bad boy deal coming my way. But nah, it didn't happen. Why? Well, according to Game, Diddy had some wild expectations. Allegedly, he wanted Game and 50 Cent to get down and dirty in exchange for a record deal. No thanks, they said. Fast forward to Drink Champs, and Game spills it all. Diddy was playing it like they're gonna drop an album, but reality check. For two whole years, they're just globetrotting. Diddy's throwing cash around, buying Game fancy bling and watches. You know, the standard Diddy treatment, taking him shopping. But here's the kicker. When Diddy caught on that Game wasn't taking him up on whatever offer he allegedly had in mind, he handed him off to Dr. Dre. I'm snitching. I'm snitching in the kitchen. Diddy. Gotta tell on him. He, he tried it on me. So I know it's true. Also, the latest man to speak out against Diddy is actor and choreographer Columbus Short, who recently shared a video claiming Diddy tried to get him to come to his hotel room at 3 a.m. In a video, he straight up said Diddy tried to pull him into a late night hotel room situation at 3 a.m. Talk about a bold move. Columbus ain't keeping quiet about it either. He's like, I'm snitching. I'm snitching in the kitchen. Columbus shared the story, saying he got a random call from Diddy in the middle of the night when he was still married. Diddy was all, why weren't you at the BET Awards? Columbus, being a married man and all, was like, uh, I'm in bed with my wife, man. Diddy, unfazed, dropped the bomb that he was at the Beverly Hills Hotel, just chilling solo. But here's a crazy one. An unnamed guy has come forward, accusing Diddy of some serious allegations dating back to 1989. The guy claims he was SA'd by Diddy and a friend after an off-campus party at Howard University. The guy says, I know this is random, but my name is blank and I was SA'd by Diddy and a friend of his on April 15th, 1989 in DC. It has taken a lot of strength for me to get to this stage of self-assurance, but I now know I have nothing to be ashamed of. I attended Howard University the same time he was there and I was taken advantage of after an off-campus party. I will be the first to admit I was inebriated. Diddy noticed I was intoxicated and offered to give me a ride back to my dorm. I trusted him at the time because we were acquainted with one another, because we had economics class together. This man went on to spill some explicit details about how Diddy allegedly lured him into his apartment, where another guy named Lorenzo was waiting. According to the accuser, he was and both of them took turns doing some really inappropriate stuff. Now remember, all of this is just the guy's side of the story, but he's not taking it lightly. He's prepping to sue Diddy, getting all his documents in order, and he's dead set on making Diddy pay for what he says went down that night. It's a serious situation, and he's adamant that it changed him forever. Now, after the whole TD Jakes and Diddy getting it on news drop it, some fans hop it on the bandwagon, while others are just straight up not buying it. One fan said, Christians will call everyone evil but fail to see the evil that preaches to them every other Sunday. While another said, it's really crazy how a random person who doesn't even work in Hollywood, let alone know any celebs, can create a random rumor on TikTok and everyone just runs with it. It's scary. People need to stop speaking on Kim Porter's name. She has people who are still grieving. It's all crazy, but drop your thoughts in the comments. Do you think there's a hint of truth? Or are people just stirring the pot and heading straight to Rumorville? Let me know, and I'll catch you in the next video.